communication modalities in the brain involve a wide range of spatiotemporal scales which are known to be implemented according to specific conditions or settings. So for example at one end of the spectrum we find communication between pairs of neurons uh, which are for the most part mediated by chemical synapses which are characterized by being temporally fast and spatially constrained and very precise. At the other end of the spectrum we have communication between entire populations of neurons, a phenomenon known to be critical for the generation of complex behaviors by the brain. At this end of the spectrum, a communication modality that is spatially diffuse and temporally slow would be more appropriate, for example, to mediate uh, coordination or synchronization between the activities of uh, functionally distinct neuronal populations. So the goal of our study was to test the idea that neuropeptides uh, released from neuronal dendrites act as molecular bridges that in a diffusible manner orchestrate the activity of functionally distinct neuronal populations. So we use as a working model the hypothalamic paraventricular nucleus, a brain center that is critical for the generation of complex homeostatic responses which are in turn vital for mammalian survival. The paraventricular nucleus contains multiple neuronal populations, including neurosecretory vasopressin and sympathetic related neurons or presympathetic neurons. An important point to make here is that the activity of these two neuronal populations needs to be properly orchestrated for the generation of proper homeostatic uh, behaviors. So within this context, we tested the hypothesis in this study that activity dependent release of neuropeptides namely vasopressin from the dendrites of neurosecretory neurons can diffuse in the extracellular space to influence the activity of neighboring presympathetic neurons, contributing this way to the generation of orchestrated neurohumoral responses in the brain. Hi, my name is Suk Jin Son, and I work as a research associate in the Javier Stern Laboratory at the Medical College of Georgia. For this work, I perform most of the electrophysiological and imaging studies that let us to demonstrate that dendritic release of neuropeptide vasopressin mediate a signaling crosstalk between two distinct but functionally related neuronal population in hypothalamus. We will show you here a brief summary of our major finding reported in this issue of the neuron. In order to test our hypothesis, we needed to have an experimental model that would allow us to identify these two neuronal populations. For this, we used a transgenic rat that expressed GFP driven by the vasopressin promoter, rendering all vasopressin neurosecretory neurons fluorescently labeled. In this rat, we then performed fluorescent retrograde track tracing to label the presympathetic neurons in the PVN. In the first set of experiments, we used a combination of laser photo activations with patch claim electrophysiology. This slide describes our general approaches. So, we patched up presympathetic neurons shown here in red and beta apply caged NMDA. Using a very precise laser system, we then engage NMDA directly onto neurosecretory vasopressin neurons. We expect this to increase firing activity and evoke dendritic release of vasopressin. According to our hypothesis, we expect vasopressin to diffuse in the extracellular space and to activate neighboring presympathetic neurons, resulting in an increased firing activity that we would record through our patch pipette. So, this is an image showing our typical setup, where we have a patched presympathetic neurons in red and a group of neurosecretory vasopressin neurons about 100 microns away. When you first uncage NMDA directly onto the presympathetic neurons, we can observe a robust, almost immediate increase in firing activity. But the key question is what happened to the activity of the presympathetic neurons when we activate the neurosecretory neurons? And this is what we found. When we uncaged NMDA onto vasopressin individual vasopressin neurons, we found that in each case there was also an increased activity in the presympathetic neurons. 
What is important to notice is that there was a latency of about 3.5 seconds between the stimulation of the vasopressin neurons and the response of the presympathetic neurons. As a second approach is, we use simultaneous dual patch clamp recording from identified presympathetic and neurosecretory neurons. Our hypothesis was then that evoke firing activity in the neurosecretory neurons would evoke dendritic release of vasopressin, which would then activate the neighboring presympathetic neurons. So here we have an example of two neurons that were simultaneously patched and loaded with Alexa 647, the left one being a GFP vasopressin neurosecretory and the right one a presympathetic retrogradely label. So here we have the neurosecretory vasopressin and presympathetic neurons. At the beginning of the recording, we inject current into the neurosecretory neurons to evoke a few bursts of the action potentials. As can be seen, there are no changes in the activity of presympathetic neurons during that time. However, as time proceeds, we can see that with a delay of several seconds following the stimulation of neurosecretory neurons, we can observe a depolarization and increased firing in the presympathetic neurons. So these studies that Subjin just summarized then demonstrate the presence of a functional crosstalk between pairs of neurosecretory and presympathetic neurons mediated by the dendritic release of neuropeptides. Now, in addition to this whole set of in vitro studies, we also perform whole animal in vivo studies in collaboration with the laboratories of Dr. Koshik Patel at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and Mike Ludwig at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. And in these studies, we show that this uh, interpopulation communication modality is in fact critical for the generation of a complex multimodal homeostatic response in response to a homeostatic challenge. So taken together, we believe that this uh, set of complementary in vitro and in vivo studies support the notion that activity dependent dendritic release of neuropeptides from an entire population of neurons can diffuse in the extracellular space to influence the activity of relatively distant and distinct neuronal populations.